there and welcome to WeatherWise. I'm meteorologist Brittany Beggs. Today we're talking about the layers of our atmosphere and we can think about them like a staircase. There's five main layers we're going to discuss today. There's the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, and finally the exosphere. First, let's talk about the troposphere. We live in the troposphere. This is the layer where we receive our weather. The troposphere is the region from the surface up to approximately 11 kilometers. This layer is kept well stirred by the rising and descending of air. It is common for air molecules to circulate in this region in just a few days where it takes much longer in the upper layers. In this layer, the temperature is typically descending with height. Once it reaches the tropopause, an inversion occurs. To measure the temperature and other elements of the vertical atmosphere, a radius sonde is used. A radius sonde is a small box that contains weather instruments. To measure the atmosphere, a gas-filled balloon is tied to it. As the radius sonde ascends, it measures the vertical profile. This includes the temperature. Now the tropopause is the boundary that separates the troposphere from the stratosphere, and this layer has a temperature inversion. But why? While the stratosphere is typically located at 25 kilometers above Earth's surface, this inversion inhibits vertical currents of the troposphere from spreading into the stratosphere. The reason this inversion exists is due to the ozone. While ozone is hazardous at the surface, it's actually important in the upper layers. Ozone absorbs energetic ultraviolet solar energy. Some of this absorbed energy warms the stratosphere. This explains the inversion. So if ozone weren't present, this layer would be colder with height. The level where the maximum ozone occurs is observed near 15 miles, but the air temperature is warmest near 30 miles. Why is this? Well, air is less dense at 15 miles, so the absorption of intense solar energy at 30 miles raises its temperature to a much greater degree. Now, the stratopause, that's the boundary that separates the stratosphere from the mesosphere. This boundary is typically found around 30 miles above the surface of the Earth. This also marks the spot where the inversion stops and temperatures actually start to decrease with height again. The mesosphere gets its name from being in the middle sphere. The air at this level is very thin and the atmospheric pressure is very low. To give you an idea, 99.9% .9 of the atmosphere's molecules are below this level, which means that only one thousandth of all the atmosphere's molecules are above this level. There are several reasons why we can't live in the mesosphere. While the percentage of nitrogen and oxygen is about the same at the surface, the low air density would make it very hard to breathe. Pilots that fly near 10,000 feet for too long without proper equipment can experience something called hypoxia. Hypoxia occurs when the brain becomes oxygen starved. Most planes nowadays are pressurized, so this doesn't happen. Another reason why we can't live in the mesosphere is due to the abundant ultraviolet solar energy. That and a combination with low air density would cause major severe burns on our skin. Because there is little ozone in this layer, there is less absorption of solar radiation in this layer. And this is why temperatures decrease with height up to near 85 kilometers. At this height is where temperatures are at their coldest at negative 90 degrees Celsius or negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The next layer loft is the thermosphere, also known as the hot layer. In this layer, oxygen molecules absorb energetic solar rays. This warms the air. Because there are relatively few atoms, however, and molecules in the thermosphere, the absorption of a small amount of energetic solar energy can cause a very large increase in the air temperature. And because the amount of solar energy can depend greatly upon the solar activity, temperatures in this layer can actually vary from day to day. 
Because the air density in this layer is so low, the temperature at these heights can't be measured directly from a radius on. Instead, the profile in this layer is determined by observing the orbital change of satellites. This is caused by the drag of the atmosphere. The amount of drag is then calculated and related to the temperature. So, knowing the air density, scientists can then compile and calculate a vertical profile of the temperature. Located in the thermosphere is the ionosphere. The ionosphere really is just an area where large concentrations of ions exist, hence the name. The ionosphere plays a major role with radio communications. Now there are three main regions in the ionosphere. There are D, E, and F. The D or low region reflects radio waves back to Earth. At night, this layer disappears. So around sunrise and sunset, you'll hear those AM stations say, well, we're changing our frequency now. Well, that's because around sunset, the AM stations can actually have a greater output. The closest layer to space where molecules and atoms shoot off into space is in the exosphere. This layer is also known as the upper limit of our atmosphere. The exosphere is very thin and is made up mainly of hydrogen and helium. Towards the top of this layer, the molecules are so far apart that there is no clear boundary between the exosphere and outer space. Some molecules escape into space while others are pulled directly back by gravity. Thank you for joining me on this week's WeatherWise about the upper levels of our atmosphere. For additional information, you can log on to herald-mail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at HM Weather News. And of course, you can like our Facebook page at Facebook slash HMTV6. Until next time, stay weather wise.